So let's just talk really basic of the definition of a line. A line is a continuous mark drawn with a pointed or moving tool, such as a pencil, brush, pen, anything of that nature. You could carve it into wood, you could carve it into linoleum, and it's a path of a dot moving through space. So a line, you know, think if you just make a dot, and you make another dot, and another dot, and another dot, and you keep going, or you make a dot, and you keep your pencil down and drag it across. That makes us, makes a line. And so the line is a very, is the basic element of all design, and it has complete unlimited forms. So line is one of the most important elements of art, and it, and often artists use a variety of types of line in one single work. So lines can work to define an object. So if you're drawing an apple, you could put lines together to look like an apple. And they can vary in the way they look. They can be straight, wavy, thick, thin, dotted, broken, curved, dark, light, vertical, horizontal, parallel, or oblique. Maybe some of you recognize some of those words from our lesson yesterday. And some are very subtle and some are very implied. And then others are just super obvious. So, you know, making a line by painting two different colors in one area, so you see the line between the colors, and then just drawing a red line, those two, can, you know, can look very different. And so using lines, you can derive shading or shape or form, even perspective. And lines, they're able to suggest a great movement in a piece of art. Lines can also create beautiful patterns that can really look interesting using different weights of lines, different colors, different kinds of lines to really make a piece pop. So we're going to talk about a couple different pieces of art here coming up. And I have the name of the artist as well as some just basic information of the art. Okay, so let's take a look at Ben Sean's supermarket. And these are just basic, simple lines that he has made. He broke down shopping carts into their most basic form of just lines. And then he added little pops of color, which I think are very interesting. And you can see kind of the bottom part of the cart where the food sits on top of. And see those lines are much closer together than the sides of the cart where they're a little bit farther apart. As you can see, he used these lines to make a really interesting composition. Okay, so let's look at um, Joan Miro's Black Swan series. So here you can see again that there was lots of basic lines. Uh, they weren't quite as precise as the first piece that we just looked at. But once uh, the artist made those lines, they went ahead and filled in with with colors and I find a really interesting line is right to the the left of the kind of tear shaped red piece with the black dot in the middle that white space I find really interesting with those two lines that are kind of cutting into there um, I think that's a very nice use of of the line especially with the the black line or gray line with the white now let's look at Henry Matisse the swan this is super, super basic, thin lines. They're all the same weight, which means there isn't one that's darker or thicker than the other. And it is a very basic line study of a swan. So you can call it a contour line study. Simple lines, just making up a very simple shape. And let's compare that to Georgia O'Keeffe's Evening Star. So one has these really simple, thin lines, while the other one has thicker, colorful lines. And that color isn't completely uniform, is it? You can see there's some texture in that color. So these two pieces are, are very different from one another. Very different use of the lines. Okay, so David Hockney. This is a really cool piece of art. There's a lot going on here, isn't there? Um, this is a big piece and he has squiggly lines and there are straight lines everywhere, stripy ones, zigzaggy, swirly, wiggly lines. And all of these different lines create a really nice piece all together. 
There's lots of interesting things to look at here. And I love that there are lines that contrast one another so deeply right next to each other, like the couches compared to the floor. I think that is very interesting. Okay, and Paul Klee, I adore this piece. Uh, he defined the figure using a method called taking a line for a walk. And you can see that the line begins at the forehead and travels down between the eyes to indicate a nose and a mouth. And then he painted around that, but it really does, you can follow that line meandering with your finger. It really is just like taking a little stroll. I also like the lines that he used to make the eyes. I think that's very interesting and, and more so interesting is how he used the paint in the background to make lines. Now there's not like a defined red line or anything drawn there to make the outline of the head and the shoulders, but there's still a line there between the two colors of paint. All right, Jackson Pollock, this guy, he's pretty incredible. I mean, look at the lines in this piece. They are all over the place. They're different colors, they're different textures, they're different thicknesses. And what he did was he would just take paint and splatter it all over the place. And he could get different effects by how he splattered that paint, how much he splattered, what he used to splatter it with. And this is a really big piece of art. All right, so Martin Ramirez. This is a really interesting piece. Um, I absolutely love these bows of lines. You know, the one set going up the middle of the piece and then the mirroring sets where the, you see where the train is coming out of the tunnel down on the bottom left side. This tracks that go into that. It shows this great depth and beautiful contrast to the horizontal lines that are happening next to it. So by using those different kind of lines right next to each other, you can really, you know, make a very interesting effect. And we see this in Jay Seeley's painting, the next one. This is really cool because the artist is really using contrasting lines to make a piece. So you see lines with different weight and you see lines going in different directions. And that's what's really giving us a sense in this piece. And I don't know if you can see it, but up towards the top there's a hand and an arm and you can that gets pointed out just by the placement of the lines and maybe a little bit of shadow but this one is really cool i can show you guys how you can make a hand like that that would be a lot of fun all right now keith kalowitz this is a really beautiful self-portrait and i like the way that the artist used lines different kinds of lines on either side of the face. So you see on the left side of the face, it's very, you know, drawn out and, and blended. And then on the right side of the face, there's all these horizontal lines. I adore that varying texture. And the last one we're gonna look at, I love this piece by Elizabeth Catlett. Elizabeth um, painted difficulties of rural life through the use of strong, bold, straight lines. The bold lines and angles on this face suggest a quiet strength and dignity. So I want you to take notice of the pin there holding the clothing, and that can really show a value of strength. It's also a nice little contrast there, right in the middle of that dark, that horizontal line flowing into the folds of the fabric and the line of the neck up the neck to the face. It's a very interesting movement as well. I mean, look at the lines and detail on that hat. It is absolutely gorgeous. So when you look at these paintings, you can go back and look at them. I, I did attach just a simple file with um, the images so that you can see and them. When you look at these pieces, there's a whole bunch of questions you can ask yourself to really analyze the work. So you could ask yourself what kinds of lines are being used by the artist? How many different kinds of lines do you see? Do lines point to a particular object or do they outline shapes? What role do lines play in this work? Do they create movement or do they just look still? 
Are there any lines that show dimension? Or do you have any lines that express feelings or sentiment? Do you see any space created by a line? I mean, I definitely see a space created by that one line in Joan Marrow's piece, The Black Swan, where those, those two lines come into that white space and it just makes it look so interesting. Okay, so for follow-up work, I have a couple ideas. This here and the next couple pictures are what's called a line study. And it's where you just create boxes and you experiment with different kinds of lines. You can use color, black and white, pencil, Sharpie, pen, but it turns out to be quite beautiful in and of itself. You can also take a straight edge and Sharpie or pencil or whatever, and you can make a design like this, or you could do a curved design like this. Look at the movement and the depth that's in this picture. And you, of course, are allowed to make whatever shapes and designs you want, and then coloring it in can be just absolutely amazing. Now, this is a 3D hand picture like we saw in Celie's Stripe Song. And there's actually a video that um, I'm gonna post at the end that will show you how to do this. It's quite simple. You can do black and white or you can do colors. Now here we see Matisse's swan again. And I think earlier I mentioned that this is called a contour line drawing. And the next little bit of this video is me showing you how you can do a blind contour line piece of artwork, which is where you look at something, be a plant, something in your house, yourself in the mirror, uh, one of your family members, a friend over Zoom, and you don't look down at your paper, you just draw. And these end up being kind of kooky, but it's a lot of fun and they can make some absolutely fascinating art pieces and really great line studies. So, and the more you practice, the, the better you get at drawing without looking at your paper, actually. So I encourage you to give it a shot and see how things go. Okay, so I'm gonna draw this plant. And the difference is I'm not going to look at my page, okay? Here we go, I'm gonna start up here with this leaf. And so I try not to pick up my pencil. As much as I can. That's a blind contour. That's kind of what it turns out. It, I went really quick, didn't I? Um, I? There was no sketching motions like this. Like if I was actually drawing the leaf, I would be doing more sketching and things like that. Nope. It is really just straight contour lines. You can see all the way, all the way down here. I don't know if my camera angles there. But here, I'm gonna pick up the camera now. And there they are. It's my drawing in the plant. So it's gonna turn out to be pretty kooky indeed. It can be very silly, but you can also do this by doing a self-portrait in the mirror. Yeah, let's see a little bit better. So I'm gonna do a self-portrait really quick. Eyebrows. Um, nose. Mouth. Hair. Ears. Oh, look at that, that's not that bad. And I obviously didn't do enough hair, did I? So thank you very much for coming to 
our art lesson today. Um, please, please show me the work that you end up doing. You guys always make the most beautiful work. And I'm excited to see what you've taken away and, and how you want to be creative today. So um, I wish you luck. Call me if you need me. I miss you terribly. And I'll talk to you later.